Pero para contar un poco más sobre ese compromiso que tiene Roche con Salud de la Mujer, vamos a invitar a Stephanie Sassman. Ella es líder del portafolio de Salud de la Mujer a nivel global para Gerentech Roche. Stephanie lidera un equipo global que busca co-crear soluciones integrales para abordar las brechas de género en salud. Welcome, Stephanie. Welcome, Stephanie. Bienvenida. Buenos días. Bienvenidos. I'm going to switch to English. <laughs> My name is Stephanie Sassman, and I am the Global uh, Portfolio Lead for Women's Health at Roche and Genentech. And today I am so excited to be here with all of you to share more about our strong commitment to women's health and why it is so crucial. Our women's health journey began by trying to deeply understand the patient journey, really the women's journey. Across conditions, we found that women as patients have additional hurdles and barriers when interacting with the healthcare system. And as we know, women are frequently taking care of everyone else. They're taking care of everybody in the family and putting their own health last. And we've seen this with our mothers, with our loved ones, and, and possibly also with ourselves. And that, and when women do present, when women do go to the healthcare system, frequently their concerns are dismissed and ignored. And looking across diseases, we were shocked to find that in over 700 conditions, women received delayed or missed diagnoses. These can be in serious conditions like heart attacks and strokes, but they can also be in autoimmune disease. And the average for these 700 diseases was four years, four years. That is the gap between when a man gets diagnosed with the disease and when a woman gets diagnosed with the disease. And when a woman's pain, for example, is not believed or is minimized, which frequently happens, particularly for women of color, women present to the emergency department and they're more likely to be given a sedative than an analgesic, which is what's given to men, right? Because it's all in our head, right? And it's really shocking, frankly, how little we still know about women's health. Women are not small men. Yet for many years, centuries, that's how medicine has been practiced. Actually, it, you know, I like to say in many ways women's health is a millennial because if we look at the regulations around how trials were studied, how, how, things were, how trials were conducted, it's really only been the past four decades that the, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration has allowed the inclusion of women across all phases of clinical research. So we have so much catching up to do. If we look in our medicine cabinets, Many of the most common medicines, there's not enough women. There's not enough data available on women. There weren't enough women in those studies for us to truly understand. There's a lot of catching up to do. And this all adds up to the really sad fact that while women live longer than men, we spend more of our life in poor health. And that time that we're spending in poor health is in the prime time of our lives. It's not at the very end of our lives. It's in the prime time of our lives. And that fact holds true across geographies and it holds true across country income levels. And facts are facts. It's unfair and it is certainly holding back gender equity in the workplace and everywhere else. And so recognizing this urgent need, recognizing this worldwide gap that unites the world in not in a good way, right? Uh, Roche is committed to developing innovative medicines and diagnostics. And these are intended, obviously, to keep women well and to support them when they get sick. And under the visionary leadership of Teresa Graham, who is now our, our CEO of our pharmaceuticals division, we established a cross-company team in 2020 to really tackle this initiative, to tackle this. We, we know we can't do it alone, but we wanted to see what can we do? What can we do across the world? 
And what we found is that, uh, you know, women face these additional hurdles, and we need to be able to analyze the women's journey across her life and understand these hurdles that she faces. And for us, women's health means improving her care in conditions that predominantly impact women, but also conditions that impact women differently. And, and so some of our key areas of focus have really been around women-centric research. How can we think about our R&D in ways that are inclusive of women? How can we think about our R&D in ways that understand a woman's journey? Um, how can we think about women-centric care, right? Knowing that when a woman goes to the healthcare professional, her care can be believed. She can actually be listened to. Um, other, other things that we've been working on are um, our communication around, this, around these initiatives as well. Um, you, you saw more about that. Um, we're also looking at how we can bring in the voices of women, um, how we can bring in experts that are thinking about health, health equity. Um, one of the things that we've established are um, research um, panels, um, as well as advisory panels. In the US, they've done an excellent job with their global advisory panel that really brings in health equity, experts across diseases that can understand how they impact patients of different races, patients of different sexes. Um, and, and so that's so important. Another area that we are trying to champion is, frankly, we need more women in medicine and we need more women in medical leadership because women are able to ask those questions differently, communicate with patients differently, think about that research differently. And so another thing that we're really championing is how can we bring forward the, the, the researchers and promote women as researchers. Um, and so with that, you saw just the video about X Project, right? That's been our platform for change. X Project launched in 2022. It's being used in over 40 countries around the world. Um, it's amazing what the team in Latin America has done, but this has also been used in Asia. That video has been viewed over one billion times. We're trying to start a conversation for change. Today is a big part of that as well. The initiative of X Project is a coalition of diverse stakeholders. We need everybody at the table. We need women at the table. We need healthcare professionals at the table. We need change makers at the table. We need policy makers at the table. Um, and what we're really trying to do through that platform is create partnerships, co-create solutions solutions that are actually going to improve women's health. And good ideas can come from everywhere. And what we should do is share and learn from them much faster. And we know that we cannot do this alone. And we are together for change. And we are the generation of change. And that's why I'm so excited to be with all of you today at this event. And I want to bring you a few examples. You're going to hear so much in these next two days. I'm so excited about what we're going to hear about, but also what we're going to create. What's going to come out of this meeting? Um, but a few examples of our pioneering women-centric approaches. And one of them actually started in Colombia over 10 years ago. And that was through the pink clinics. And these pink clinics, Roche partnered with local partners to develop clinics where women could go and get breast cancer screening. And get that screening tailored for them, meeting them where they were. These were clinics in the community. And they made a very big impact in Colombia. But guess what? One of our Roche managers in Africa heard about these clinics and said, this might work in my geography. So she traveled from Kenya to Colombia on a plane. She went and she saw the clinics and she went back and began co-creating with her stakeholders, working with county first ladies, working with the government, and they created the Empower Clinics. And you see a picture of one of those Empower Clinics right there. And you know what? There's now 19 of those clinics across rural Kenya. And they have provided breast cancer screening to over 100,000 women. But they did even more than that. Because when they started 
creating these clinics and working with these first ladies, you know what they heard? Why, why just breast cancer? Women have more than just breast, right? And so what they did is they created integrated screening. Um, and so th through this integrated screening, women can get breast cancer screening, they also get cervical cancer screening, they get hypertension screening, they get diabetes screening. In some of them, they can bring their husband, he can get screening so he knows what's going on. Really working to destigmatize and make this care, this preventative care, this important care more accessible. And I think that's genius, right? Because really, women don't have time for a body part by body part approach to our health. We just don't, right? I don't care if you live in rural Kenya or Colombia or Miami, San Francisco. I was asking my doctor, like, where's my integrated screening, okay? Uh, I think that this, we need to think about solutions like this. And you know what's happening in Kenya? Doctors are seeing stage one cancers for the very first time. They didn't ever see it before. They didn't know what it was. Now they can cure women. Cure, right? These women, I mean, can you imagine the impact that will have to society, to their families, to everyone? Here in the US, I also want to talk to you about something that we've been doing I love. It's called Love Letters. It was started by our team in New York City. What they were seeing was this disparity in screening, and particularly around women of color, around Latin women, around black women, that were not getting access to screening. And so what did they do? They said, how do we solve this? How do we as a company solve this? Well, we have to work with women, right? We have to also work with the centers where the women would go. They also worked with the American Cancer Society, who knows a little bit about screening. Um, and they work with even local artists. And they created these beautiful, beautiful materials that you see here. Um, created as love letters, truly, from these women as artists to their aunties, to their, to their grandmothers, to their sisters, asking them to get screened. And you know what this campaign did? This campaign was viewed by millions of women. This campaign drove thousands of women to get screening through a love letter through a request, because it's those personal requests that can really make all the difference. And it's those personal requests that are able to drive women to go, to feel more comfortable, to know that they're worth it, to prioritize it. You'll hear more about Love Letters. You'll hear more about so many initiatives. Uh, We've been contributing to really fuel this momentum around women's health, but there's been a whole lot more, and you're gonna hear about that as well. There is significant external momentum. Our participation has been recognized in prestigious forums like the World Economic Forum, the US National Institute of Health, the White House, and the Gates Foundation, where we've had a voice in shaping progress. This momentum is also evident in Latin America, where, I mean, you know, so impressive. All of these hashtags that you will see, you'll hear more about many of these topics on the panels. And, and today, we're gonna hear about the change makers who are really delivering on this and who are making this happen. And these ideas, we're, we're looking to expand them in Latin America, but also really all around the world. And we know, you know, we really can't do this alone. And as we celebrate our achievements, we really acknowledge there, there is much work ahead. We view the Roche Press Day and all of you as essential partners in accelerating the changes that are needed, in creating the solutions that, that are going to impact women. It's gonna impact maybe even ourselves and our own loved ones. And so I challenge each of you to join this cause and make sure that we get to work. And I would be remiss, there's one request that I have of all of you. Think of a woman in your life and ask her if she's gotten screened. Make her prioritize getting screened. If it's you, get screened. Make that appointment, right? It's pink October, but really we should be thinking of this at all times of the year. Please get your screening. We just did, I'll share with you some research. It hasn't been, it's been accepted, not published yet. It's going to come out in December. But what we looked at was breast cancer screening. And we looked at 
women who are eligible for breast cancer screening around the world, of which it's like 900 million, right? And that's a conservative estimate because we were working with researchers and they said, we have to start at age 50 because that's what most worldwide guidelines are. 900 million women, right? How many of those are actually getting screening? 20% around the world. 20% of women are getting breast cancer screening that they need to get. In Latin America, it was less than 50%. In the US, it was much higher number, actually. The, the, num the gap in the US was about 20%, but we know that that gap can be pernicious, especially in communities of color. If we looked at Asia, if we looked at Africa, over 90% of women are not getting screened. We have to do more. We have to do more, so please prioritize your screening. And thank you very much. I'm really excited about what we're gonna create today. And just this, these two days, uh, I think something really impressive is gonna come out of it. So thank you. And I'm gonna hand it over. Muchas gracias, Stephanie. Okay, thank you so much.